Okay, everybody, good evening. So we are uh, reconvening. I, I always like, like every day now seems to be like years. <laughs> um, like there's so many uh, things that are going on. It's just like mind boggling. Um, if I wouldn't want to be a rabbi, I would love to be a talk show host. I would have so much to talk about. Like, yeah, your podcast just talking about the current situation and give my own two cents about what the, when, who should go back to work, when to go back to work, but whatever else has an opinion, I can have an opinion too. Uh, uh, really, I think that uh, we're, we're really in, um, every day really is, is tremendously uh, packed. And it's really, uh, not only is it packed, I, I just, uh, on my way home, I was speaking to a, a, a Gentile who lives pretty close to my, my house, whose wife actually is involved in the medical field and um, involved in a hospital just doing the testing. So he's very well aware. And I told him, um, here's my, it's not my podcast, but this is kind of my share, uh, that, you know, really, if you ask me, and this is very true, at this point, I'm dealing with a lot of people who have um, non health issues, um, which, you know, there are very legitimate concerns and dangers and fears, which I don't want to poo poo or mitigate. But there are people who really have been hurt tremendously financially. People who are in businesses, construction, uh, who run their own business. There are people who are really suffering loneliness, uh, anxieties, emotional issues. Uh, for those saying to Hillem, I, you know, I may have mentioned this tomorrow for the case someone's not on it. Really, we should be davening, not just for a cure, not just for that. I mean, there are people who really are having issues, and that's just the beginning. Uh, the the consequences of this are are the derech atav are going to be some for some time and, and and as bothersome to me if not the most bothersome beyond the health issues um, there are people who are really steiging and growing spiritually and um, who use this to uh, pick up their game and other people have um, partially or fully collapsed to a large extent and. Some people have told me that they, are, they have, uh, without being in the shul environment, they have, their prayers went down, although for some people, dominating has went up. Other people have just um, lost it. Now, the people listening to this year uh, are not the people I've heard that from. So kudos to you. Uh, I like to think that this share is somewhat helpful in that or any share. Um, but there are a lot of people who even though, don't even listen to the recordings of this um, or, or any share, and really they're struggling. And what I mentioned last week, where's my phone? I can tell him actually it was by my stender, because I've been using it, besides the tool. So and I mentioned last week the, an amazing Pusik that we say every Friday night and Shabbos morning. Uh, in Mizmer Shirley Om HaShabbos. Now, by the way, I, I saw that Chaim Kanyevsky, Gabal Hador, he actually said in Eretz Yisrael, I mean, in general, I would say, that they asked him, could you say, could you say extra to Hillam on Shabbos? Usually we don't say to Hillam for the situation. He said, you should say that Mizmer Shirley Om HaShabbos, again. So it's the end of davening. It's Shir Shalom. They held, he should say it again uh, for the situation. And that's to Hillam Tzadi Beis. Uh, and we mentioned last week, it says, that you know, the, 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 we say in Tehillim, and, and we say in Kabbal Shabbos, and Pesukah the Zimra of Shabbos, that we should, uh, and, and actually Pesukah the Zimra, and Shir Shalyam of Shabbos, uh, that Lahagim Ba'aboker Chasesh Pesukah, that on Shabbos, it's Tov Lahodos Lashem, it's good to praise Hashem, to sing His praises, to exalt in Him, and in the mornings, to talk about your kindness, and your emunah at night. And actually the Lelos, you mentioned the seventh day of Pesach as well, even a couple of weeks ago, that the emunah is that the nights of Pesach, first night and the seventh night, those nights store up for the year. The emunah when you have emunah in the challenging times, that's really when it pays back. So I saw that Akedah Sitzchak, Akedah Sitzchak was Rabbi Yitzchak Arama. He was a Sfard, the great uh, late 15th century Spanish sages. Uh, his work on Akeh Sitzchak is a classic uh, commentary on Chumash. So he comments in Parshat B'Shalach, he asks the following question. He says, why does it say the emunascha in your faith at night 
shouldn't be our faith at night. Why? Right? We're we're requited, we're rewarded. Uh, we're rewarded and you are faithless and I should be our. We're rewarded for our Amuna at night. That when we have Amuna, that's how we discussed last week and two weeks ago. When we have Amuna at the time of night, then during the days, when it's, when it's light, it's a different expression of praise of Hashem. Why then do we mention Hashem's Amuna and not ours? In that case, it's like a Gavaldi Kazakh, an amazing, an amazing thing. Zakh, that Kedis Yitzchak. We think that when it's night, um, sometimes it's overwhelmingly challenging. Uh, it's just so overwhelming. It's just so consuming. It's just so awful, so ter- terrible. But you have to know it's that Munas Hashem, first and foremost, has a Muna in us, which means that He knows that we're able to keep the challenges we have. That, that there's no, no test that any of us will, will have where we do not have the opportunity to be successful. That doesn't mean it will be challenging for some, but it does mean that, that the, on the contrary, it's Hashem Zemunah and us that allows us to be as successful as possible, not only for the moment, for, for, for eternity, but really for eternity. You know, there was a famous uh, Rosh Hashiva in Eretz I had this close to him a few times, Shiva of Koyaka, of Yehuda Adas, uh, who's who Addis, I think, as I say, in, 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 uh, but he, whose father is Rabbi Yaakov Adas, who is one of the rabbis of Chacham of Adi Yosef and Ben Sinaba Shaul, one of the Gedele uh, Sephardim who passed away about, about 60 years ago at a young age. And he was really one of the Gedele, I think he was the chief rabbi of Jerusalem, or Tel, I think Tel Aviv maybe, for the Sephardim. Uh, but his son, Yehuda Das, the Gadol, a really, a really big time of Chacham, a real big father. And he said the following thing. There's a story about, uh, actually, you know, Yehuda uh, Das. So he, he always, he, I think he learned Ashkenazi yeshiva, so he likes to show his Yiddish once in a while. So he, he's very familiar with the Ashkenazi world. I think he learns in Kol Torah, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So he said the following thing about a, a, a person who ended up being with the Gedele Hador. Um, uh, if, if he, the following thing, he said the following thing. This boy, when he was 13 years old, his parents sent him away to yeshiva. A tremendous, imagine you're sending a 13 year old kid in general way. Well, a 13 year old boy in those days, uh, you didn't see for months or years. Uh, there were there were no texting, FaceTime, phone calls, no letters that came regularly. And if they did come, it was every few weeks. There was no sending money and sending packages. It was really a different galaxy. To send a child away at the age of 13 was tremendous, mere serious nefesh um, for the, the, the family. And um, he was tested by this yeshiva. By this yeshiva. Uh, he was impressive. And, and that the, um, the yeshiva of the yeshiva said, I'm happy to accept you, but I cannot uh, give you uh, any food, which is that you, the, 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 there, there, were, there were setups in families in the neighborhood. We're not able to set you up because we've expended all of our resources. So you'll have to uh, find other places to eat. And if you can accept that, you'll be able to accept the yeshiva. So this 13 year boy was forced to look for meals around the town. And he ended up having to get meals here and there is nothing steady. I mean, the poverty in, in most of Lithuania a hundred plus years ago was was beyond our wildest. Uh, I went to the store la- last night with my kids, well, actually with one of my children. Uh, you know, I, I don't wear masks in the street, but I do wear masks and gloves. My kids, I mean, my daughter wears masks and gloves in the store. We're, we're walking in the store, it was momish empty. Hush it. I went to Lucky in Los Altos, nine o'clock. We had, it was like the store, and us. It was a Gavaldic. It was great. Why did I go? It was open at 9 o'clock. And I knew no one would be there. We're in the Bay Area. I think, place, you know, most people go to sleep at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're, we're up late now, you know. I went there. It's half little fella. It was like the whole store was ours. I think about, I look at the store. There was, there was even tissues. Okay, the tissues. There was everything you wanted. There was, there was obviously milk and yogurts and ice cream. The place was jam-packed. I'm thinking to myself, like, this is the design that we have. The store was teeming with food. Teeming are all over the freshest fruits and vegetables. And, and anyone, the chutzpah could compare this in one iota to a Holocaust or even to I, I, the test that they had in America 
when Jews came here and they had to work on Shabbos, they could starve to death. No comparison. I mean, I think it was like, there's no comparison. I'm walking on the store to myself. You know, it was packed, packed. It was actually in Machaya. I never had such easy shopping my whole life. Come on. Went to the line. There was a line. It was great. It's great. It was great. Um, so, you know, uh, so this was not like way in Europe. In Lithuania, they were poor. And at the end of the meal, it was extraordinarily challenging. So this boy had to beg, beg for meals. Finally, he gets a couple of meals. But they never had food for him. And ad kedei kach, that it, it, the low of the low for him was that he went on Erev Tishabov to go to a house to eat his sudam of sakas, to eat his suda before the eating on the ground with the bread and the, and the egg. And the, when he went there, he, the food the, it reeked, the house reeked of like rottenness. And he had no choice. He had set up this meal. And he ended up eating there and throwing up the meal afterwards. Like he literally went to him, Tishabov. And he threw up, and he threw up, and he threw up. Uh, and he went to any fast official to Shabov. He was 13 years old by himself, no one to fend for him. Um, uh, and he fasted to Shabov without that. The worst thing is, he realized after Tishabov, the only being in the yeshiva, came Pesach for a little bit, is that his, all of his suitcases were stolen um, when he was in the, in the shul. And he now had no clothes or the clothes he was wearing. And for the next few years, he had to wash his clothes Friday to complete poverty. And remember that said, like, look at this boy, he's going to an yeshiva. A hundred years ago, it was a time where, where Lithuania was teeming with children who left the path of Torah partially for poverty, by the way. They were running into communism, secular Zionism, um, the Bund, which is, which is social left-wing, typically anti-religious parties, uh, you know, or all other running away to America and to the, throwing off their kippahs there. And this kid at 13 years old is going to yeshiva and he has to throw up, you know, rotten food, not, not eat or, or, or before Tisha B'Av, have his clothes stolen. This boy, Rabbi Das would say over, he came when the G'dayle, he doesn't say it was, he said when the G'dayle, one of the greatest tzaddikim of the generation, one of the most pious people, who probably, whose light shines to this day. And we're, we're here in the marriage of people. How did he become this? Do you think he became this because life came to him easy? Everything was smooth and no, it, it be, the way he became this was because Hashem looked at this 13 year old kid that he could handle this. He could be, you know, the, the, the most successful he ever could uh, cause this. And I, I mentioned on a personal level that, you know, I am thankful post facto that I had uh, Epstein Barr slash chronic fatigue for about a year of my life when I was 21, 22. Um, and and I, I, I'm happy I didn't have that test at age 13 because I don't know if I would have made it. That's why I, don't have it. I didn't have that test. But I think that when I, when I look at that personally, um, my belief really is, was then, Baruch Hashem, but much more now that that was necessary for me to have certain skill sets um, and abilities, which I would never have had. I would have never, if I never had had that experience of being completely uh, hopeless in my own mind to get myself better, that there was no way you have chronic fatigue. You know, again, I don't have a cute case to chronic fatigue, but I had symptoms for about a year, um, you know, that you didn't know what would make you better. And you, you look around, no one's being sympathetic because you look 70%. You are, are okay, it's just 30%, you feel very weak. So, you know, you don't get that sympathy and you're forced to, in your own world, have a For me personally, that was a good thing. And so I think for ourselves, what's very important to realize is it's emunas chabaleos. Every one of us here, is that you people who are listening live or who are listening to a tape there are for the most part, I haven't heard this from you, uh, but we all struggle with this. And I, and I include myself in that. And that is why, wouldn't this be easier um, isn't there a challenge to this? Uh, you know, we're all, we're all, you know, I, I may have mentioned the store is packed, but we all are suffering. I don't take that away from any of us. I, I just mean to say it's no comparison <laughs> to some of the other challenges and tests that I've heard. It's not the Great Depression, not Rock to mention that, get to that, nothing close to that right now. Um, you know, I'm not sure we won't get anything near that, you know, but it is certainly challenging. Uh, and for many people, they have, um, you know, Part of it is feeling that darkness and not seeing the amuna. 
And I think it's very important for us to realize it's not just, this class is not just to get us through it. It's to remind us that we're in this because Hashem wants us to be more. And Hashem believes and knows more than we could ever know that we can be so much more. And the path to all of us as individuals, I'm not talking about the world's cheshbonus, the world's calculation, but the path for all of us really is to know that and to walk out of this uh, situation better and stronger that we should be gudolim. <laughs> we should be great the rest of our lives. We should be the greatest people that we could and should be. Uh, just like that 13-year-old boy, his path to greatness uh, was be'emunascha belelis. It was certainly challenging. I, 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 if you don't think that that 13-year-old boy had days of doubt and challenge, then he was normal. He was human. But that's how he became great. So just a reminder when we had this class, because I hear people um, telling me more than once the past couple of days that they're not doing well. Uh, you know, I think that we all could and we all should not just be doing well, we should be growing in ways which would not be possible um, in, in normal times. Okay, uh, well, the piece we're going to do right now in, 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 in Rabbi Yena, um is, I, I'm gonna, you know, I've been very sherry, I'm more than, much more than that. Maybe because I'm in my office, I'm not in the social hall or in the show. But I actually, I have two quotes on my desk which I've had these papers that have been crinkled, you can take a look, uh, for several years. And I keep it right next to me with two talking quotes. And one of the two quotes is what we're going to do right now. Um, and I'll get to, you know, well, no, and when I get there, I'll, I'll, I'll call it out. Well, talking, and from the Indian Abitachan, Asher Zaharno, that we've been talking about and reminding ourselves of the importance of Bitachan, of trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, trust in Hashem, Ishala Yivtach Ba'adam. Never to put your faith in man. Doesn't mean to deal with man. Never doesn't mean to, you have to do your hashtalis, your proper court. We live in a world where we need people, where we, where we should be going to people. But our faith is not in nurses, sorry, Mrs. K, or doctors, or accountants, or anyone else. It's in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right? We, we, we should pick the, I, I if I pick a doctor, um, you know, I'm on Kaiser, so if I'm going to look, I'm going to look at which medical school they went to. So if they go to Penn, I know they're obviously very well educated. Uh, they go to Harvard a little bit less, Stanford a little bit less than that. But you know, I, I, I'll check it out. MIT, I can see who this time we're going there. I'll put MIT ahead of Harvard for medicine. Um, even though Harvard Medical School is probably better. But for you, we'll put everything. And I'll look, I'm serious. I'll look, I'll come, you know, probably as important or more important than the school, how many years they've been practicing. Like I will, I'm not going to any doctor. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do my best to go to the best, and I think that's all of our obligation, um, the best, get the best possible medical care. If you want to get a loan, you should go to an honest person. Or you should always, you know, if you're doing construction, like people come to you all the time, like they do deals and they get uh, all the time. You can't imagine. I have, I, I, I'm like, uh, for some of the Israelis especially, you know, like a, like a rebel in a certain way. I, I mean, I hear all the deals. Like, you know, I, and I just like, why did you look into this person? Like something goes sour. Like, did you, did you do basic research? You know, you just look at a name and sign up with the person. Yeah, really? I'm a big fan of, of, of doing proper establishments, checking out who you're dealing with, making sure that they're, they're the best possible provider of the service that you need them for. Um, I can tell you law, intimately, uh, there's a big differential in lawyers. There's real, there really, really is. So, but having said that, it's not, that's just a shtalis, that, that you, we put our faith in Hashem. So the first thing is we don't trust a man. And here, this is the important part. That human beings cannot hurt you or better you, help you or hurt you. Uh, unless Hashem has decreed it. Unless Hashem has said, this person is going to give you the loan, give you the ice cream if, you're, if you want ice cream. He's going to give you a job. Or, or it can take your job away from you. This guy, this, you know, somebody who's this Indian or Chinese or African-American or white American, Caucasian, whatever, they're, in your, they're your boss and you, you don't think they like you. Maybe they don't like you, but they can't fire you unless Hashem wants it. You know, it could be Hashem gave you this boss because you got to change jobs. Uh, 
but you know, and that, therefore they create that reality. They, he can't. It's not, they, your life is not going to be decided by some uh, African American lady or white American man or I'm not picking this up by thing, I know, or Jewish Hasidic guy. Well, it makes a difference to me. Right? That, it, that it's not up to them. It's up to our courage, Right? It really is not. Like, people, are, oh my goodness, my life is going over. Your life is over. You think because you know some guy doesn't like you, your whole life is over. Your ch- no, this guy can't do anything to you. It's all Hashem. Now, it could be that Hashem put this as your boss because you're supposed to move companies. You don't realize it today. It'll be, a, it'll be your own journey. But that is. But but this guy himself is not doing anything to you. Um, as Yeremia said, together, curse it. You want to get a curse, Chas Shalom? You want a curse? Who wants a curse? Pasha, you, you know what I mean? I, I'd be scared if, uh, if a rabbi in our generation, who, any rabbi, certainly a Chasha rabbi, would curse. You say you'd be cursed. Yermio, Yermio, Jeremiah, you got to curse him. I would be, you want a curse? Well, guess what? This is, you know, Yermio's not saying, it's not his opinion, by the way, it's Nevoa. saying, I'll be prophecy. That a person who puts a trust in man is cursed, is cursed. The Nemar and, and Yeshaya said, "Chid lo chamin adam, distance yourself from putting your faith in man." The Chanida beemes kilo biyad basir v'adam la lahara lo. You can't hurt you. People are terrified of people, I, and I'm I, I'm going to tell you, I I believe that for Orthodox Jews, from the greatest challenges of bitachon. Uh, and I've said this before, our people, not they, they trust in God, they, 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 they don't work on the second day of Yom Tiffer and Shabbos, they're not going to get hurt. They believe that. But, I, but they believe that people can hurt them and they forget about Hashem. I, 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 how do I know that? Because I said this a little while back. I have people coming into my office, like, they're hurting me, they're killing me. There's my mother-in-law, sometimes, sometimes it's family, uh, uh, and sometimes it's neighbors. Sometimes it's, you know, other, they, they believe that all of a sudden it's the, the guy down the street is going to decide their fate. It's like that person is going to be the one who's going to decide everything in the world. Um, and the person has to know, can I be honest, no, no human being now could hurt you without a gzeh mashah. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean to go to the worst neighborhood uh, in New York City or Chicago, uh, you know, or Oakland. He, or go, you know, wherever it is, and say, okay, no man can hurt me. I'm safe. God, no, don't, yeah. a murderer is a murderer. Stay far away from them. But it me, and, and by the way, it's like driving a car 100 miles an hour. If you, if you go into a dangerous neighborhood, uh, you are going to be judged on your merits. Well, are you worthy of getting out? If you drive 100 miles an hour like a maniac, you are, first of all, endangering your life and other people's lives, and you were judged. So whenever you jump off a cliff or ever something dangerous, so you actually judge at that moment, are you worthy of being saved? So if you go to an area where there's gunfights or gangs, so then you're, you're, you're a fool. Um, but, we, but even there, that, that murderer can't do anything to you unless there's examiner examiner shalom. But you need more merits uh, if you do it. But I'm not even talking about physical danger. I see overwhelmingly uh, is nothing like that. It's people at work, and they're worried that they're, 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 someone's going to beat them to the job, or someone's going to hurt them. They're nervous, and like their whole destiny, all of their family, their children, it's all up to some random guy who got the promotion before you. Like that's, and there's no Hashem in the lives. It's like, I, I'm, and I'm telling you, I Rachmanis, I hear some Orthodox Jews. I can't believe it. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I sometimes, I you know, myself, you know, I, I will be stirred, I'll be bothered, because I think that someone or something's going to affect me or my family, you know, and it's shaka, it's, it's completely false, it's, it's not true. Right? The only one who can ultimately affect you, that, again, I, I told you, if I'm going to a doctor, I'm picking the best doctor, I'm going to research the doctor, if I'm going to make an investment, if I'm going to, you know, deal with people, I will try to put myself around the best people, that's, that's normal living in this world, no one's saying that, but after I, you do that, you, you, have, you put your faith in Hashem. Um, uh, as King David says in, in Tzalem, in God I put, I, I put my trust. Lo I'm, not, I'm not scared. Now, David was the ultimate, and I mentioned a little while back, he learned Tzalem, David is the ultimate Baal HaBetachon. Lo Ira, Mayasa Adam, what man can touch me? This is the same David who will go without armor 
to fall, to fight Goliath and you know and to fight Goliath because he lived completely. It wasn't be talking by the way. This is very important. Every every iota, every drop that we get of true faith and trust, uh, not just cerebral, but in the God emotional is priceless. It's eternally priceless. That it's and it's priceless in this world. That it, how much it benefits us and it, it endows us with so much bracha uh, in, 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 in this world. So it's it's mamish half It's it's priceless. However, um, even though it's you know uh, yeah, it, 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 it's priceless, the high level bitachon. It's real. It's you can't say have bitachon and you're nervous. That's not real bitachon. It means you may have improved yourself a little bit, but real bitachon means it's real. It's a litmus test. So I, me, Menachem Levine, would never in a million years go against Goliath, Goliath because I'd be killed. Because David's reality was that he lived completely with God. So David actually killed a lion with his bare hands, and he actually killed Goliath because to David a lion was nothing, and Goliath was nothing. And when Goliath would laugh and scorn the Jewish people and God and David, to David that was an assault, and he was willing to put himself in, uh, on the line because he wasn't scared of Goliath. All he was scared of was Hashem. All he lived with Hashem. I don't think there's anyone in the past few hundred years actually I shouldn't say that. I don't think anyone. I don't think I know anyone who you know could be the one the guy could have done. That. I have no idea. I, but but my point is is that that's not a joke. You know that I uh, I, I would venture to say. I don't think the Vilna Gaon would have went out to, to fight Goliath because B'derek um, HaTeva, you know, you have to be 100%. Maybe he would have, I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't. I, I know myself. I, 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 I have no doubt in my mind that I would be killed in one second fighting Goliath. Just like I jumped off a tree. I jumped off an Empire State Building. But to David, but to David, it was, what? I have faith in God. I'm not scared. My Yasa, what can man do to me? Now, by the way, if Goliath would attack you or I, then we would be uh, allowed to have the faith to be saved. And like that case, the gas chamber, right? You sure Hashem care if I like I imagined, then we may be Zoycha to a miracle. We just don't want to put ourselves into that situation because we're not at that level we talk on. But if, if God puts us into there, I would actually I think that I would have faith and maybe is a is a merit for my whatever, you know. But to put yourself that, you know, that that's really the high level. I'm getting a little bit too too technical here. But that Hashem lilo iramayas li adam, right? Also, it says later to him, like Hashem is with me, right? What is man going to do? I'm not scared. And we say this throughout Allah Hashem ori v'yishi. God is my light and my salvation. There's nothing to be scared of in this world. Which means, what do you mean light? So light means a lot of things. One thing light is it's and when it's dark at night, you hear, you know, all kinds of noises. I remember as a kid, you know, it's sleepovers in, you know, in camp. I went to sleepover camp. You pay, my parents paid a lot of money. And then they would take you out to these overnights in the middle of the woods, you know. You'd sleep outside. Now, some people do that when they're big kids, you know, like, uh, I don't know, the mill rods or adlers in good times. Like, those, they all go to the mountains and sleep out there. I have no, des- I'm free. It's like, I have no desire to do that. I'm happy to be in my bed. Uh, but, like, at night, you, everything is amplified. You hear noises. Something, some, you know, some of the things sound scary, you know. But day, light pushes it away. Sometimes, you know, you know one of the tricks, which is brought down the Sefer Muster, if you're, if you're ever scared of people, like, again, I mentioned, I, I, I've dealt with very often um, good, good people, amazing people, who just are, um, are scared of their own reality. So, like, they all come in like in a half about their 88 year old mother in law or father in law is out to kill them or ruin their life or their brother in law or their boss. I'm talking about Jewish bosses. And there's so, and like, why is that? Because it, all they see is the darkness. If you have the light, you realize that no, that person's, you know, I know your mother in law. She's a nice lady. I know your father in law. I know this person. They're not perfect. Maybe they have their own desire. They're not to kill you. The light takes away the danger. You think this person's so scary and so dangerous? Light takes it away, actually. So one of the most of tricks is whenever you think someone's scary is to amplify, to make them look silly in your mind, like like the Joker or like Humpty Dumpty, whatever you want to do, and just like make them look. It's a joke. It, no one, no one can hurt you, um, unless Hashem says that you you deserve this or you need this. 
for reasons like I mentioned before, it's for your own personal uh, greatness. But my Yasili Adam, you think man can choose to hurt me? It's all Hashem. It's like you get hit by a stick again. It's not the stick that's hitting you. It's a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And so the Hashem is my light. Where am I scared of? Amen. Bavo Atzara. Midaito ki akol biyad Hashem mitzbarach v'chiyatzal biyad amaka p'nei levavo mu adas al Hashem mitzbarach hinei ke'ene avod el yodei denem. Therefore, when things dangerous things happen, when we are challenged, when it's scary, when you do have a boss who may hate your guts, or all of a sudden the person who you never got along with got promoted to your manager and is going to report about you, or you're in a situation like we are today, which is a very, you know, as I mentioned, you can, you can do your best and, you know, the wrong contact, inadvertent, or whatever it is, you're in a person in a challenging time, right? You should, um, you should be. You should look up to your master. Don't look at the stick. Look at who's hitting you. It's Hashem. Don't forget about Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And you should have, first of all, increase your shemayim. And you should be doing it right. And also to have hope. Put your faith in Hashem. The, the, the word that will appease the boss at work. Now, by the way, if you have a boss who doesn't like you, are a manager, or you're in a, of course you do whatever you can to make your situation better. Be politically adept, be friendly, be nice, do your job, do whatever you need to do to be, to be successful. But if Hashem put you in that situation, so it could be, by the way, sometimes you have to make life changes, right? So I'll go back to myself. When I had Epstein Barr uh, slash chronic fatigue, I had to, had to change my diet. Um, I, I started to exercise a little bit more. Um, I went to doctors. I thought, what do I need to do? You know, and, but ultimately, my salvation was from Hashem. Right? We, of course, we should change ourselves. It's like something today. This COVID is so bothersome. Uh, not for you people on, this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the recording or, or watching live, but for, for the world. I can't tell you how um, sad I am, uh, how bothered I am, not, you know, that on a, on a global scale, there has not been... Uh, a reckoning of what life is about. It's, I'm, I feel like I'm surrounded by heresy. Um, you know, that it's all man and man will get a cure and we'll get a vaccine. It's only 18 months or less and herd immunity. I mean, I, and all those things are important, but it's, we got Kaddish Marco. I'm, I mean, and I'm telling you this, you and I need to strengthen ourselves because we're surrounded by heresy. What's the heresy? You don't hear Hashem? There's no Bezer Hashem. There's no please God. There's no God mentioned. There's no God mentioned. You know, it's, it's nothing. It's all man. It's all, it's what's going to happen. You know? Everything is up to, uh, up to me. It's Mamish Shakuo. It's all around us that way. Um, and, you know, Rachmanus, I, I, I think that, you know, we, again, the people watching and listening to this, both live and recorded, are, are people looking to hear what Hashem says. And I'm sure all of us, have made changes to our lives and thought about it existentially. Um, but the world has not. And that's actually concerning um, more than anything else. But it's depressing in a certain way that, that we, we can have such a moment of humility that to realize it's not up to us. And yet nobody hears the message. And I say nobody, I'm talking globally. Uh, globally, it's all about, you know, which act we'll do next. And that we should be t- taking the proper precautions uh, or, or, and opening what should be open for the other realities of economics, etc. But it's Hashem. And we do the same thing. We, we, we're scared of people, of bosses, of neighbors, of, of relatives that are, or, that are problematic relationships. Uh, and we, we could easily forget about Hashem. And, and, what, and so when you're in that situation, we have a terrible boss or a neighbor who's scary. Uh, that really it's Hashem telling you one of two things. Sometimes you have to make a change, a physical change, change your job. You need to move on. And this is your way of, of, of you know, there's a law of inertia, law of thermodynamics. People like to stay where they are, even if it's not good for them. You know, uh, you know we, we would, you know, even Yaakov Amino wanted to have a little pleasant life. No one wants to uh, change if things are going smoothly in their own mind. So sometimes it's Hashem knocking and doing saying, you have a different challenge, a different journey. For whatever reason, you have to move on. Um, but 
definitely always, and more often than just change, is that Hashem saying, you need to wake up. Where's your tefillahs to me? You need to give more charity. You need to do more deeds. You need to work on yourself. And this scary boss can get fired tomorrow or could decide to get married and move to, to I don't know, to Oregon and live, on, live outside Eugene and play the flute. I don't know. It could be a million things, right? This person could say, get a promotion and not be your boss anymore. He can go to work at a different company or a different opportunity. There's, the boss is just a stick from Hashem. He's saying to you, wake up. <laughs> wake up, cool me, Oyeri, get up. What are you doing with your life? More charity, more tzedakah, more thought, more reliance. Hashem. You think it's all up to you. It could be that you need rectification because of you, the way you treat other people. Um, the top of the below Suffolk. The Lord goes up below the Kiyat. Kav had Salman and Maka. Shinam are Palgi Miley, Melak Pier Hashem, Akar Yakbat Yeto. And to know that everything comes from Hashem, even the king, right? You know, whoever, whoever, um, you know, there are people who think that Donald Trump will destroy America and their lives in the world. I thought Obama would, and for his offer, certainly. But it, I'm not really here to talk about my political. I think Joe Biden may, and I think Trump could also. But I, I, what I don't believe is that you and I, our lives, um, to the extent we can't control it, are going to be decided in a negative way that we shouldn't experience by any president. It's all up to Hashem. Now, we have to do our due duty, we have to do our due diligence. Obviously, we want merits, the good things. But no one's going to, you know, no one's causing World War III if God doesn't want to. No one, like, who's going to cause nuclear war? No one's causing nuclear war. No. No, not, so only like that. No one's not. That's all up to Hashem. If Hashem wants it to be nuclear war, you have the two nicest presidents, and the messages get, get crossed, and by mistake something happens, and there's retaliation. You don't have to have Iran. All you want is Hashem wants the nuclear war. Just like this little this Magiv Rachman son came, in one second everything could change like that. Also, it doesn't. It's not, it's not up to the people, and therefore the pasuk says it. It's Paul Gemayim Hashem. A king tomorrow things could change. And the person who never wanted to do things could end up Nick, Nixon. Nixon was an anti-Semite. How do we know that? Because he was been taped. You heard of Nixon. The man, the man was a was was actually contrary to revisionist history. Was probably one of the most successful four ministry presidents. Um, in the in in the, you know he he did amazing things on foreign policy, largely because he is Kissinger and others, but. He, but he was a drunkard, an anti-Semite. And the man, what happened? In the 73 war, he was the one, Israel was on, you know, it was on the ropes. Israel was the Derech HaTeva going to be destroyed um, until and they ran out of weapons. The, the, the third Egyptian army, everyone likes to tell a story how uh, Sharon encircled it. They had no weapons to fight it at a certain point until America started airlifting tons of weapons to Israel. Um, and it was under Nixon that this happened. And there's all kinds of different stories and theories that Golda Meir told him that she's going to nuke the Egyptians because they had nuclear weapons unless we get weapons. And they all, whatever story you want, you want. I, I, it's not my point tonight. Um, although that whole Yom Kippur war was super miraculous, what happened there. Um, it was Nixon who bailed him out. This bum, he's a bum. He was a, he's a cheat. He's a bum. You know, he's also, you know, uh, he was no lover of Jews. He would make fun of Kissinger, by the way. It's recorded. He would mock him. He was mock his Judaism. Uh, and he's the one who saved Eretz Yisrael. So why? Because Hashem, in one second, there's a calculation because of Russia, because of this, or whatever it is. If Hashem wants it, that's what's going to be. And therefore, and therefore, which is important to you and I right now, is when we're dealing with COVID, it's all Hashem. So if we're a scientist, we should be scientists. If you believe certain politicians are better or worse, then vote for those people. But, but don't forget, <laughs> this is all Hashem. All Hashem. Yad Hashem is Baruch Vavlo Shiach Reish Shatzar Kol Bukhas and Akash Baruch Hu is there to, to help, you know, um, in, in a moment, Kiku Kola Fayatzar, just like before the Tzara, before COVID, Hashem was here and COVID comes right now. Right? And, and, and it's, it's so, you know, when I think I mentioned in the beginning about people not steiging not growing during this time, it's because they're thinking and reading the news, this, this heresy, this kvira, all around us, from the most conservative, the most liberal, to everything in between, uh, the, all of the media, 
it's all about man. It's all about the Chinese, China, or Wuhan, or this one's policies, or this governor's too strict, too reckless. Like that's all that's reported. Like governor of Georgia. I mean, governor Newsom is a moron because he's going to not control. This one is a governor Newsom is brilliant because he saved the other governor. Quote like that's all you hear all day. Like you know, you know or Trump. What do they know about hydro? And he thinks this. They really mean when he said that. They not mean when he said that. It was this. Who cares? I mean, do you really make a difference if Trump says this or not? If you don't like him, you're going to vote against him. Right? No, no, no. And if you like him, you'll vote for him, right? But what that's like consumes the news and everything around. And there's people who know the counts in Switzerland and Italy. And are we crazy? Are we pushed out of our minds? Hashem is giving a magifa to the world to wake us up. And we forget Hashem. I, I mean, there are people who read the news and, and follow this more than they're thinking about Hashem the whole day. And, and when they think of Hashem when things are bad, really it should be the biggest wake up call that Hashem is knocking on the door. And we have a faith in Hashem. Ah, it's up to Hashem. Then it's the biggest place to be tough on. Not scared. You know why? Because in one second it can go away. In one second, it's, it can go away. And in, in, in fact, you know, to the extent that we're thinking, we're, if Hashem is doing this, it's emunah schabalilat, it's for our best, forgetting the world right now. Us as individuals, it's for our best, for us to become better people, for us to, to shtai, for us to, honestly, I think, as I think I've said multiple times, it's the gift of getting close to Hashem, uh, the gift of really feeling in your life that everything is up to Hashem. And it's in it, that Hashem has put you in the situation, uh, and it's the biggest, biggest, biggest uh, 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 g- gift. I actually finished the paragraph. We're not going to get to my statement tonight. We'll get to Mark's. I get to it. Um, you can. Hashem is put in the stream because he loves you. And you know, I'm not fit the world, the philosophical why the world has to go through this. And Hashem loves the world too. But for you and I right now, Hashem is put this for our benefit. For everyone, Ben Munas said, we should be good. We should be great. We should fulfill our potential in this world. Right? We should be the spiritual giants for eternity, forever and ever and ever that we could and should be. And this is our opportunity. This is our chance to do that. And if you know that, you should have hope. You should have hope, first of all, in salvation. You should have hope in yourself that you're going to be successful in this. says David, strengthen your heart. Right? As I mentioned, this shear and any Bitochan shear, it's all West Point. This is just theory. Will you and I be successful in faith and trust? Is up to us. The battle is in ourselves. Right? The battle is in our own hearts and minds of to see Hashem and to feel Hashem. And to feel Hashem. You know, to, to really, truly feel Hashem in, in, you know, in, in, our, in our lives. And the more hope, because we understand Hashem is all kind, all great, the more hope we have, the Omet Halevi Tochas Tigdal, this is the Sakta Benia, Tigdal Milas Hanefesh. Our own soul gets raised and goes up. Our own soul is uplifted. We become greater individuals, holier individuals, uh, more spiritual. We're on, on all of us. It's talking about war. Don't be scared. You're looking at a neighboring army, and the old armies, they used to have all kinds of noise makers and machines, and they were banging their, their shields and their spears, and they, they, were, they, were, they were, you know, we say, they would have no mercy if they got you. No mercy. Um, you'll see their chariots and their horses. Don't be scared of them. This, that's like the ultimate. It's up to Hashem. You should, remember, you should fear Hashem. Because Hashem is the one who will decide, will you be successful at war? 
Who will morachem who esmaritzchem? Right? Hashem will be will be your fear, and Hashem will, will give you your sal, salvation. Actually, we'll pick up tomorrow night on this topic, um, which I really believe, uh, and, I, and I'm telling you this um, and for my own self, and I'm telling you from really dealing with many people. This solely applies to COVID uh, and realizing the source of it, what, what, where our fears and our hopes and our heads should be, but but it's also very much life um, that every person we deal with will deal with differently if we realize that they're just pawns and that the real uh, person moving the, all of the all, everything has a shadow. All of life and weight. It's really a gift that we have at this moment. So we will pick up. There's good stuff to come on this topic tomorrow night. So stay tuned. Okay? And we'll tomorrow night. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank good you. Night. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.